Hello everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the 2013 Retina MacBook Pro and see how the specific MacBook holds up in 2023. Now, it's quite clear that this MacBook probably shouldn't be the first Mac you should go and pick up if I'm being honest. There are a lot of other choices out there, but I will say that this type of MacBook is still hardware-wise pretty decent. It's very surprising how good of a job Apple did with these types of MacBooks, and although I probably would not recommend buying these MacBooks anymore, considering the fact that the M1 models are so much better, these specific MacBooks still hold up in terms of the hardware decently well, and honestly, if you're trying to get a MacBook that doesn't need a lot of power, or if you're just like streaming something, or you just need like a side MacBook, this thing is not a bad deal. You can probably get them for like a couple hundred dollars nowadays, and these are not bad options. However, like I said, my main choice would be to recommend like used M1 MacBooks by this point. They've gone down in price tag quite a bit. They're still very, very powerful. And it pretty much only makes sense to buy those ones over these older Intel ones. So if you want to pick up those MacBooks, links will be down in the description. You can get that from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of these MacBooks, on the front, or at least on the top of these MacBooks, you had your silver, basically the silver top. It was that Apple logo that was right there, and it was a glowing Apple logo, which was beautiful. Nowadays, we don't really have those like glowing type of Apple logos anymore. During that moment, during this moment, we actually did. And that was a really cool thing that we had. So that in and of itself was a really, really cool thing. And that kind of stuff, honestly, sets these MacBooks up in a really good spot, just that in and of itself, which was really cool. Now on the sides, you know, this thing was a pretty sleek MacBook as well. If you remember the 2012 MacBook that came out, I guess right before this, before the Retina model, there was that older, you know, one that had like more flexibility that you can change out a lot of things internally. It had the CD tray inside of it too. But with this MacBook, obviously they removed a lot of stuff, but they also compared to now had a lot of ports. I would say now the M1 Pro models and M2 Pro models have a lot of ports as well. But on the left side of this MacBook, we had our MagSafe 2 port. So we were able to quickly like charge up this MacBook, which is really cool. We had two Thunderbolt 2 ports, which was awesome. So we could go ahead and dock these things up to like a Thunderbolt dock, or we could dock it up to a Thunderbolt monitor, and we'd be able to use this MacBook, you know, with a different monitor thing like this without having to use any other ports. So that was something that's really cool. We had a USB 3 port as well. So we could go ahead and plug in, you know, a USB device on the left side and on the right side, which we had another port there. And we had a headphone jack right there too, and dual microphones. So that was a lot of ports right there. And honestly, there were what, four or five ports, or at least four ports on the left side. That was more ports than we were getting on like the maxed out MacBook for many, many years. And on the right side, this was probably my favorite area. We had another USB port. So this was awesome because you could go ahead and plug in a USB port on both sides. We had an HDMI port as well. And then we had an SD card slot. I would give up so much to have an SD card slot on my device. And those things were beautiful. Being able to go ahead and expand the storage like that, just by going through and you know, expanding the storage by plugging in the SD card was amazing. And it's still one of my most favorite memories of using these types of MacBooks. I didn't use the 2013 MacBook Pro personally for me, but I did use the 2014 MacBook Pro for a long period of time. And I had an amazing time with it. And it's still such a beautiful memory that I have with that specific MacBook. And it's mostly because of the ports. Since then, you know, when I did upgrade to the other M1 models, it was kind of sad to give them up, but it was such an important thing because giving, you know, getting more speed and power is probably the better thing right there. So that kind of covers it up on the outside of this thing. Now flipping this thing open, and this is where things start getting a little bit more complicated. So on the display front, we basically had two different model sizes. We had a 13 inch size and a 15 inch size. And this was a really cool thing that we had. Being able to go ahead and basically, you know, get a different type of display no matter where we wanted to was a really cool thing. And I think that stuff is a really awesome thing. If you wanted a bigger size, well, you could go and buy it. If you want a smaller size, you can go and buy it. Personally, for me, I like the 13 inch sizes for a period of time. But now I do like the 14 inch MacBooks. But the 15 inch ones were honestly pretty decent. And I had a 15 inch MacBook Pro for a long period of time as well. Now, with this type of MacBook, the display itself was a probably one of the better aspects of this specific device. Lots and lots of people love these specific MacBooks because of their display, and those Retina displays still look and hold up very, very well. A lot of people look at these MacBooks, and they are still very happy with the way Apple went ahead and built them. I mean, they still look very good, they still look very premium, and I don't really have too much to complain about them from that you know, storefront. I mean, that is one of the better aspects of this specific MacBook. And even when you look at the bottom half with the keyboard and with the trackpad, there, I mean, for a long period of time, these, you know, 
that keyboard was probably a, one of the situations where people kept these older MacBooks rather than upgrading their MacBooks. And the reason for that was basically because of lack of travel and the lack of input that you were getting on the you know 2016 and like 2020 MacBooks. So between those years, a lot of MacBooks were faulty. They were failing all over the place. And with these MacBooks, that was not the case. It was still very strong, it was still very powerful, and it was a very cool thing that Apple did here. You're also getting that trackpad at the bottom too, which still had like a button layout, so it didn't have that vibration motor built in just yet. And that, again, in and of itself, was one of my favorite things going on here. So at least on the outside, when you consider basically everything, it was a very good thing, I think, that Apple did here. They basically dominated it on the monitor side, they dominated it on the keyboard side and the trackpad side, and that kind of stuff is super cool. But looking at things now, I will tell you, at least on the outside, this MacBook still holds up very, very well, and it's still something I'm super happy about that Apple kind of did here. Now, on top of that, another thing that Apple kind of did for the most part was, I would say it was a decent upgrade internally from the 2012 MacBooks, but the main question is, how does this MacBook hold up now in terms of performance? And I will probably tell you the performance of this MacBook really isn't like out of this world. It's basically not that great anymore either. I think the base model of this MacBook came out with 4 gigabytes of RAM, but you can configure it up to 8 or 16 gigabytes. So you did have a little bit of flexibility there, but this thing's performance nowadays is definitely showing its age. I mean, I even have like a 2015 MacBook Pro nowadays that is still decent, but you can definitely tell like it is showing its age and that's just kind of the things that happen here. So I will tell you with a MacBook like the 2013 one, would I recommend buying it? Probably not in terms of the performance side, but there's also another big thing, the software side. This thing has been discontinued with software for a little bit of time now, and that's just kind of one of the weirder things here. When you're getting a device like the 2013 MacBook Pro, you're getting a device that's already been kind of unsupported with software. And that's just kind of the bigger issue, I would say, more than really anything else. With a device like the 2013 MacBook Pro, you are getting a device that really is kind of stuck in a weird situation. It's not going to be getting software updates. It's not going to be getting, you know, really better in terms of the performance side. So you're stuck in the past, kind of. And that's just kind of what happens here. So I wouldn't really be super wary of buying a 2013 MacBook Pro if you're just planning on using it as like a side MacBook or you don't plan on doing anything wild with it. But if you do plan on actually using this thing as in like an everyday Mac and you plan on basically doing everything you'd ever want to on this specific Mac with it, well, then that's probably where the bigger issue is going to lie. And I would probably avoid buying this MacBook from that standpoint. If you want some MacBooks, I would recommend, like I said, the M1 MacBook Pro is probably a really good choice. You can also buy an M1 MacBook Air, and that is also a cheaper MacBook than, you know, the M1 MacBook Pro, and it's going to be more expensive than this thing, but you are going to be getting a Mac there that's going to stand the test of time for a long, long period of time. And that is something that I really do like with these types of Macs. So in my opinion, this MacBook really isn't worth buying anymore, but if you want the newer M1 models, Maybe even a 2015 MacBook Pro might still be worth it, but you probably want to avoid the 2016 up until the 2020 MacBook Pros and the non-M1 models, you probably want to avoid those too. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, well then.